Hey, what's up guys? This is Rich, here to give you an awesome, more extensive look at Metro Last Light. The game is coming for Xbox 360, PS3, and PC uh, just in a couple months actually, on May 14th here in North America, and May 17th over in Europe. Um, you know, to this point, you've seen us write a bit about it, you've seen a variety of trailers, learned a little bit more about the world and sort of this, uh, the evolution from Metro 2033, we're dealing with a game that takes place one year later from that game. What we want to do today is show you three different clips of the game. The first two are actually the same area played in different styles. What you'll be watching here is a more stealth-oriented style of play. Uh, the guy kind of running through this demo for us is trying to stay out of sight, generally not be detected, kill when necessary, but generally just get from point A to point B without pissing everybody off. Uh, there are definitely rewards to doing this style of play. You can find more ammunition, you can find more resources, and you also don't have to spend ammo that you don't need to spend. This particular area that you're watching is relatively simple. Few guards, few light sources, lots of shadow. You're able definitely to just kind of get around as you want. You'll notice, you know, you need to kind of scope out the area. Oh, there's a ladder here. I'm going to go up and over the scaffolding and down to the other side. Ammunition is at a bit of a premium, especially when you're fighting the mutants and sort of the bigger threats of the game. You need to kind of be careful of how much you have. I never was necessarily at a, a point or in combat with the mutants where I completely ran out of ammunition, but I never really felt like I had an overwhelming amount of it either. I always was kind of worried that if I got too engaged with my enemy, I might run into a problem. So. One of the ways you can avoid a scenario like that is by being a little more cautious when you're you know, dealing with enemies like these humans uh, and the different factions that, that oppose you. Uh, play it a little more stealthily. Try to be a little more cautious. Be a little more careful. Keep the ammunition for when you really need it, when you're outnumbered and overwhelmed by giant ape mutants that are leaping at you in midair and you just need to get them away, kill them. The second playthrough, which we're about to see, is actually going to be the same area, but more action-oriented. With throwing caution to the wind, let's shoot everybody and kill everything. Who cares if we have ammunition later, let's just get through this area. Very different type of style of play, and uh, you know, guards or enemies have three general awareness states. There's completely oblivious, there's a little more alert, and actually, right now, these guys are actually a little more alert. The music will sort of cue you to that, to their alertness, as well as you'll hear them do the sort of usual, hey, what was that? What's, what's going on? Um, and then there's the sort of full aggro, we're, we're coming to get you, we're, you know, grouping up and, and trying to outflank you and, and shoot you dead. Um, and you'll see a little bit of that in a second here as we get through this first area. You'll notice the player is able to extinguish light sources, turn off lights, that sort of thing. You can actually shoot out lights as well, but if you do, and a guard is nearby and you know, notices that spark or glass, they will start to investigate and be curious about what's going on. Same area again, like I mentioned before, this time our uh, demonstrator here has got the attention of his enemy and they are coming right at him. You'll notice this, demo, this segment of our demo is going to be much quicker. He's shooting everybody dead. Again, he'll be able to explore and find the equipment and ammunition that was there before, but at the same time, he's expending a lot of his bullets, a lot of his ammunition. There actually are instances where the enemies will sort of turn up the heat, if you will. It's not this particular area in the demo I played, but there was another one where the, base, the enemy would basically unleash poison gas into the environment forcing you to use your air filters, which are a precious commodity in this game, to, you know, survive. And that is something that, you know, more, more even than ammunition that you don't want to do. You'll actually notice your watch currently in this environment just displays the time, but, you know, you only usually have five, six minutes of actual oxygen filter, um, and you need that for when you're above the surface, because above the surface, you have to use those filters. So if you're using them down here, just fighting regular regular dudes and soldiers, that's, that's precious oxygen that you don't have for later. And you'll notice uh, the user interface is actually very minimal, very simple. You notice there's no waypoints, no maps. You'll notice basic ammunition counters in the corner. The game forces you to rely on environments and reading cues in the world 
which we'll get to in a second, but you won't be able to just rely on pulling up something that tells you to go 46 meters in X direction. And uh, that, that, that makes the game, you know, have a very different play style. This third segment is going to show RDM, our main character, dealing with mutants. You'll notice here, he tried to flip a switch, nothing happened. You didn't see a green light happen. He notices some wires running from a box, and this whole switch is supposed to power a door that's blocking that cart that you just saw off to the right. He's trying to head down this mine shaft. He sees where the wiring's going. It's going into this door, so he's going to go investigate and see if he can't find a way to power this box back on so that he can continue along his way along his, to, to achieve his mission. Fighting mutants is a very different proposition than fighting humans. Um, you can avoid mutants if you're lucky, but generally speaking, there's no two play styles. You're not looking at, oh, hey, I can completely sneak around these enemies and use the light. In this case, you've got these scorpion spider-like beasties that are just going to come at you. Uh, they actually use this pretty cool attack and retreat style of play, especially if you start really engaging and shooting at them where, you know, they'll rush at you and then they'll duck into some hole that's at your feet. It's pretty cool. It, this whole area in particular, which is running on PC, reminded me a lot of, uh, you know, just a, a more survival horror type of game, which is great. Uh, it's, a, it's a stark contrast to when you're fighting humans, which is a little more of your typical first-person shooter type encounter. Here, you know, lots of beasties, and you're only seeing scorpion and spider type buddies here, but I ran across ones that are more like giant dogs and apes, uh, and there's even flying ones that you'll face in the open uh, surface. Uh, one thing you'll notice here is that I have a headlamp that was allowing me to see a little bit better in the environment, but that has a battery. It will run out. I need to actually reprime it to continue to use it just as when I'm on the surface or if I'm in a poisonous environment. I need to use my oxygen filters to be able to breathe. The game has a, a bit of an emphasis on resources and surviving in a post-apocalyptic world, which I think is kind of cool. It's a, it feels a little bit different than most shooters where you're just running and gunning. Uh, you have to kind of keep an eye on how much oxygen you have and what you need to be able to survive, which is, which is pretty cool. Again, you'll notice the wires running along the wall there, and boom, here we go. So RDM's hooking up his, his primer device, getting this... Uh, conduit or, you know, board working again, believes he's got it right, you know, he's going to head back to that switch so that he can hopefully continue along his way. One of the things I was most impressed with while I was sort of playing through Metro, playing through my own demo of the game, was just the level of detail, the way the game is able to realize its environments and its world. I really, you know, the game wants you to be, play it a little bit slower, be a little more uh, focused on exploration and the detail and the immersion. And I think I think so far 4A Games has really accomplished that. If you are wanting a shooter that's a little more fast-paced, you probably uh, will want to think about Metro at least, you know, second-guess it a little bit, because it definitely has a slower tone to it. Uh, one thing I should mention, actually, is sort of the emphasis on stealth versus killing. You... One of, the, one of the sort of secrets, not so secrets, of Metro 2033 was there are actually multiple endings. Metro will never be so obvious about telling you whether you're being good or bad, but that can actually play into you know, the game and its sort of outcome and how it progresses. So, as RDM gets away from the spiders, we'll leave you there. Stay tuned to IDM.